welcome back to this next video and this is the uh, part two on the uh, protein staining or the uh, protein spot detection uh, if i give you an overview of the previous video in the previous video i've told you that uh, once the protein bands that have been separated by 1d or 2d electrophoresis they can be visualized by using uh, different methods of the uh, ink gel detection and uh, I told you about the uh, journal steps of the uh, staining procedures that generally what you do is that the first step is the uh, water wash to remove the electrophoresis buffer uh, from the gel matrix because the electrophoresis buffer that can uh, interfere with, that can interfere with the uh, staining procedures uh, in some of the cases that uh, as you will see in this particular video an acid or alcohol wash uh, to condition or fix the gel to limit diffusion of the protein bands from the matrix and this is the step that is used in the uh, silver staining that we'll be focusing on in this video uh, thirdly what you do is that uh, you treat uh, the gel with the stained reagents that actually uh, interacts or uh, interacts with the uh, or diffuse into the gel and that interact with the proteins thereby staining them and the last step usually in the staining procedure is to de-stain to remove the excess dye from the uh, background gel matrix. Uh, in the uh, previous video, we discussed in detail about the uh, Kumasi uh, dye stains and I've told you that two of the most common uh, Kumasi brilliant blue dyes that are used to stain proteins. One is known as the Kumasi brilliant blue G250 and the other one is known as the Kumasi brilliant blue R250 and both of these they actually uh, have this uh, triphenyl methane structure that is common to both of them and this was actually the figure which was differentiating the r250 and the g250 from each other that in the g250 you actually have got these two extra methyl groups uh, which are not present in the r250 and these r250 and the g250 that actually interacts with the lysine the histidine the arginine the tyrosine tryptophan or the phenyl anilin, thereby giving uh, proteins their uh, blue color uh, we discussed about the name and discovery uh, and then I gave you a detail of the steps of the uh, Kumasi staining. Now, uh, this is how the protein bands look after they have been stained with the uh, R250. You can actually see these blue bands. Now, in this particular video, I want to focus on uh, another important staining procedure for proteins, which is known as the uh, silver staining. Now this uh, silver staining, uh, it is one of the most sensitive methods for detecting proteins in the bands. Now uh, what this uh, technique do is that in this particular technique, there is a deposition of metallic silver onto the surface of the gel at the location of the protein bands. So uh, in the gel at the position of the protein bands, there is a deposition of metallic silver and you can actually see the uh, metallic silver by its dark brown color as you will see uh, at the end of this particular video. Now the silver ions uh, which, are, which actually converts into the metallic silver, they come from the silver nitrate uh, which is actually the stain reagent in the silver staining and these uh, metallic silver, uh, they interact and they bind with certain protein functional groups. Now the strongest interactions that occur with the uh, carboxylic acid group of the uh, aspartic acid and the glutamic acid uh, uh, not about this particular carboxylic acid group over here because this is present in uh, all of the amino acids the uh, Aspartic acid and the glutamic acid as you can see over here they have got this extra carboxylic acid group over here and the uh, metallic silver that can actually interact uh, with these uh, particular carboxylic acid groups over here because these carboxylic group they are actually uh, involved in the uh, peptide bonding so they are usually not available for interaction with the uh, silver stains so the carboxylic acid groups which are present in the aspartic acid and the glutamic acid strong interaction of the uh, metallic silver that occurs over here. Uh, another important functional groups uh, that is present in the histidine which is known as the imidazole group as you can see over here this is the imidazole group and it actually provide strongest binding site for these uh, metallic silver. Uh, the uh, sulfhydryl groups which are present in the cysteine as you can see over here uh, these are also uh, providing binding site for these metallic silver and uh, when you talk about the uh, lysine amino acid there is this uh, amine group uh, which also 
provide a binding site. So the strongest interaction that are actually uh, occurring at these particular positions of the spartic acid, glutamic acid, the histidine, the cysteine and the lysine amino acid. When you talk about the steps that are involved in the uh, silver staining process, uh, the first step uh, is the uh, fixation step. Uh, now in the uh, fixation step, what you do is that the gel is treated with uh, different acids like the uh, benzene sulfonic acid, the acetic acid or the uh, trichloroacetic acid, sometimes the methanol that is also used in this particular uh, fixation process. Now what the uh, fixation step do is that when you treat the gel with these uh, benzene sulfonic acid or acetic acid or the trichloroacetic acid, you will not be using them, uh, all of them, but you will be selectively using them, whether you will be focusing on the acetic acid or the trichloroacetic acid, etc. Now in this uh, fixation process, uh, this fixation actually uh, uh, renders the micromolecule in the gel insoluble and prevent them from diffusing out of the gel during the subsequent staining steps. Uh, as I'll show you the steps uh, later on that the uh, staining procedure that actually involve a variety of the staining steps. So there are chances that these uh, protein bands, they may get out of the bands and they are not available for the staining. So this fixation step is actually making these uh, uh, macromolecules, these proteins insoluble and preventing them from diffusing out of the gel during the staining steps. Another important function of the fixation step is that there are certain substances that you have used in the uh, 1D or the 2D uh, electrophoresis like you have used the electrophoretic buffer, you have got uh, different ions that are present in these buffers, you have used the uh, denaturants like the uh, beta marcapto ethanol, you have used different detergents like the sodium dodecyl sulfate. So all of these uh, substances that can actually uh, interfere with the uh, silver staining procedure. So when you uh, use, when you go for these fixation steps, these uh, substances that are also removed from the gel and once they are removed, that means that they will not be able to uh, interfere with the silver staining step. So the fixation is doing two things. It is actually making the protein bands insoluble and it is removing the substances that can interfere with the uh, staining procedures. Now the uh, second step in the silver staining that is known is the sensitization step. And now what this uh, sensitization step do is that in this particular step, uh, you are actually treating the gel with a glutyl aldehyde, usually a 5% solution of the uh, glutyl aldehyde. Now what this glutyl aldehyde solution do is that they are going to chemically modify the proteins and when these proteins they are chemically modified, they are more reactive towards silvers that you are using for the staining. Now this step that greatly enhances the sensitivity of the silver staining for protein but is not necessary when silver staining DNA. Uh, when I use this term that it enhances the sensitivity, what I mean by that is that I've told you about the specific groups of the amino acids that can interfere with the, that can interact with the uh, metallic silver. So those are also available, but these glutyl aldehyde, they're actually providing more binding site for the silver, thereby enhancing the sensitivity of the uh, silver staining. Now, uh, excess sensitization reagent that uh, results in a high level of background staining. So once you have uh, gone for the sensitization step, the gel is washed thoroughly with deionized water uh, so as to uh, remove the uh, excess glutyl aldehyde solution. Now what this glutyl aldehyde do is that it actually reacts covalently with protein covering the proteins with the aldehyde groups and these aldehyde groups they are a very good interactor of the uh, metallic silver so the metallic silver they can actually have a very a strong interaction with these aldehyde groups which are provided by the glutyl aldehyde uh, and the uh, provision of the and the pro providence of these aldehyde groups that actually enhances the uh, sensitivity of the silver staining now the third step, which is actually the staining step, it is also known as the uh, silver impregnation step. Now in this particular step, once you have uh, sensitized your protein with the glutyl aldehyde, so in this particular staining step, what you do is that you are going to treat the gel with the uh, silver nitrate solution. 
Now this silver nitrate solution is actually the source of the silver ions that are reduced to metallic silver and this metallic silver is actually the uh, particular color that you see in the uh, silver staining. So these uh, silver ions they are actually converted to metallic silver by the formaldehyde that we will discuss in detail in the next step which is the uh, development step. Now, when you talk about the uh, this particular step, the staining step here the, uh, in the uh, silver nitrate solution, you are actually getting the silver ions, you are not getting the metallic silver. The reason is that in the uh, staining step, uh, actually the uh, mildly acidic condition that prevent the silver ions from being reduced to the metallic silver because the conversion of the silver ion to metallic silver that actually uh, requires a higher pH around 12 that we will discuss in the development step how that is achieved so in the staining step you are actually using the uh, silver nitrate solution and the mildly acidic solution they uh, actually prevent the silver ion that has been formed in this particular step to being reduced to the uh, metallic silver now the gel is briefly washed following this step to remove excess silver from the gel surface now once you have added the uh, staining step and you have washed the gel the next step is the development step now in the development step what you do is that you are adding the development solution which contain two things one is known as the formal aldehyde and this formal aldehyde actually reduce the silver ions to metallic silver by acting as a reductant so the formaldehyde is actually converting the uh, silver ions into the uh, metallic silver you can see this plus on the metallics uh, on the silver ion and the zero on the uh, metallic silver over here now as i've told you that this conversion of the metallic silver of the silver ions into the metallic silver that requires a higher ph so in the development solution a sodium carbonate is present and this sodium carbonate actually shifts the ph to approximately 12 and when the ph that is around 12 it actually promotes the uh, conversion of the silver ions into the uh, metallic silver and then this metallic silver that actually deposits on the uh, specific functional groups that we discussed in the start of the video now the last step is the stopping and the preservation uh, once the uh, desired intensity that has been achieved you actually stop this uh, you actually stop this process of the conversion of the silver ions into the uh, metallic silver uh, and this is achieved by the stop solution uh, in the stop solution uh, you can uh, use two things one is known as the EDTA and this EDTA what it do is that it is going to complex with the silver ions this EDTA is a metal ion chelator so it is going to uh, chill the silver ions and if the silver ions they are chelated by the EDTA uh, they are no more uh, converted into the metallic silver so the staining procedure it stops secondly what you can do is you can use the acetic acid solution and when you add the acetic acid solution that means it is going to move the ph towards the acetic one and if the ph uh, moves toward the acetic one the development of the silver ions into the metallic silver that actually stops now this is the uh, uh, actually the uh, detailed steps of the staining procedure. Um, when you talk about the stain solution or the silver stain solutions, the solution that actually comes in concentration form, in concentrated form. As you can see over here, this is the silver stain kit solution A and it comes in a 10x concentration. The solution B again it comes in the 10x concentration and the solution C that also come as a 5x concentration. So the first step you have to do is you have to make the 1x solution of the solution A, the solution B and the solution C. Now what are solution A, B and C that will be clear in a while. So the first step you have to do is you have to make the 1x solution of the solution A, solution B and the solution C. Next what you do is you have to uh, transfer your gel once you have completed the uh, SDS page for example you have to transfer the gel to the receptacle containing 50% methanol 10% acetic acid solution and this 50% methanol and 10% acetic acid solution that is actually uh, a fixation solution which will be uh, rendering the uh, protein insoluble and they will not be leaving the uh, gel during the subsequent staining step. Once you have added your gel into the fixation solution, you have to incubate it for 15 minutes in the fixation solution. 
uh, once you have completed the fixation for 15 minutes you have to uh, remove the fixation solution and you have to rinse the gel three times with deionized water so that the fixation solution that is totally removed from the uh, gel uh, once you have washed the uh, wash the gel with the deionized water you have to incubate the gel in deionized water for five minutes with gentle shaking so so it to make sure that all of the fixation solution that has been removed from the gel now in the uh, third step what you have to do is you have to aid the solution a now this solution a is actually the sensitization solution uh, and i have given you a detail uh, why this sensitization uh, is important in the staining solution so in the next step you have to aid the solution a for 90 seconds and this solution a is actually the sensitization solution containing the gluten aldehyde uh, making the proteins more reactive towards the metallic silver uh, once you have uh, incubated the gel with the uh, sensitization solution, which was the solution A, uh, you have to uh, remove the solution A and after the removal of the solution A, you have again uh, washed the uh, gel uh, three times with the deionized water so that the solution A that is completely removed from the gel. Uh, once you have uh, removed the solution A, uh, the, the next step is that you have to add the uh, solution B to the gel. Uh, one of the important thing to keep in mind is that in some cases uh, you can also use the uh, silver stain enhancer and what you do is that you add the silver stain enhancer about four to uh, five drops uh, in about 150 ml of the solution B and what this uh, silver stain enhancer do is that it actually reduces the uh, development time so it is not necessary to use but if you want to reduce the development time you can actually uh, add this uh, silver stain enhancer to the uh, solution B now this solution B is actually the staining solution because this is the solution of the uh, silver nitrate uh, once you have added the solution B, you have to uh, incubate the gel in this solution B uh, for 10 minutes with uh, gentle shaking. Uh, once uh, you have incubated the uh, gel with the uh, solution B, you have to remove the solution B and you have to arrange the gel three times again with the deionized water to completely remove the solution B. Uh, next what you have to do is you have to add the solution C to the gel now this solution C is actually the development solution developing solution and as I have told you that in the developing solution there are two things one is known as the formaldehyde which reduces the silver ion to metallic silver and as this conversion requires a higher pH so sodium bicarbonate is used sodium carbonate is used which actually increases the pH to 12 so solution C it is added which is actually the uh, uh, developing solution uh, after development this is how these you can see these dark bands in the gel over here and these dark bands they actually appear uh, once you have uh, developed the uh, gel uh, by the help of the uh, development solution uh, now once the desired intensity that has been achieved now the staining can be stopped by addition of the stopping solution as i've told you you can use the acetic acid solution which decreases the ph or you can use the adta which actually uh, work as a chelator and it chelates the uh, metallic silver now the gel can be stored at four degrees c uh, for further use so uh, if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends and in the uh, next video we'll be talking about some more uh, staining procedures